I'd like to show you another study by the Soviet composer Sergei Shigis or Zhigis. I posted this on the community tab and it was great to see people getting stuck in and trying to find the solution. So thanks for that. It's good, good to see the activity. So let me give you the solution. Um, it's white to play. And as ever, when we're looking at any chess position, whether we're simply playing a game, or looking at a study, then we should look at the most obvious moves first. This is the first step in calculation. And you can see that white's pawn here can be pushed towards the queening square. So let's push that and see what happens. Pawn to h6. Now, play over the next few moves is forced. Black's only option is to push the b-pawn and white pushes, and black makes a queen, and white makes a queen, check, and the queen interposes. Okay, so far so good, but what has white got here? Well, exchanging queens doesn't look good. Black must be winning this, because the white king is going to have to come back. Um, and, and the white king is just going to get squeezed away, basically. I think because black has flexibility here, you somehow always know that this is going to be winning for black. And the white king gets squeezed out. Um, or if we have this position, yeah, if the king goes back, well, I dare say there's more than one winning move, but if we play... Let me see. C5... Looks good. We can always protect that with d6. And if pawn takes pawn, then, well, I hope you know your basic king and pawn endgames, but that is winning for black. So, white cannot exchange on b8. Then again, if the queen moves away, okay, random move here, then queen b6 is mate, so that's not promising. Okay, so could we protect that square? So let's play queen d4. Now, if white comes out of this position unscathed over the next few moves, then that's pretty good drawing chances. The problem is that black can actually exchange queens immediately, like this. Queen a7, and we're back in this, well, exactly the same end game, and this is winning for black. Well, that was a pretty forced variation after this pawn move h6, so, um, yeah, pretty easy to calculate. But it's not working for white, so it's clear that white is, is struggling, at least in that variation. So what are the alternatives? Well, we use that very important method when we're calculating the process of elimination. If we can't move the rook's pawn, we've got to try something else. Well, moving the king doesn't seem to make any difference. The pawn will run. So, OK, let's throw that one in. I mean, it's quite possible that during a game, when no one's tapping us on the shoulder saying, ah, you've still got something here, you know, we might just resign this position. But d6, it's the only option, apart from pushing the rook's pawn. Now, if black takes that, let's have a little look. Now, that makes a massive difference to when we push the pawn and get a queen. So we get a queen, h8, check. Queen has to interpose. Now this diagonal is open, so we can play queen h1, check, and mate in a couple of moves. Well, that's promising. So d6 looks pretty tricky, but there is a good response for black. First of all, we should say this one isn't good, because after this here, we get a queen queen has to interpose and now of course white can just exchange queens and push the rook's pawn. Incidentally that isn't quite as clever as it looks at first sight because black can force a draw with queen d6. Aha! Stalemate again that very important motif when it comes to pawn endgames and queen endgames.
No, of course, instead of taking the pawn, queen takes queen and the pawn goes through. Okay, back we go. So we're at this situation again. White has just played the pawn to d6. Pawn takes pawn doesn't work. B2 doesn't work. C5 doesn't work. C6. Now, that looks more like it because it closes off the diagonal. Well, here, white only has one option, and that is to push the h-pawn, pawn to h6. And black has one option, push the b-pawn, pawn to b2, h7 for white. And now black makes a queen, and white makes a queen. Check. Black has one option to play queen b8. Hmm, what's going to happen after the exchange of queens? Does it make a difference that the pawn stands on d6? Well, no, not at all in this position. In fact, the king can just run around here. For example, here. The white king can't go in because the c-pawn runs. And in this position... Well, once the king reaches e6, that's game over. So in this position, yeah, there's a problem. The queen has just come back to b8 to block. If the queen moves away, there's going to be trouble. Um, well, okay, random move. Well, watch out for a random move, because let's say here, then queen a7 is actually checkmate. So what about queen d4? Does that make a difference? No, that's checkmate as well. Hmm. But in fact, white can still make a draw in this position. And stalemate is that theme we come back to again, which is one of my favourite themes in the end game and in the middle game too. Still, we can get some there. Queen d8 and Black has no sensible option but to take the queen, and there we go. That pawn fulfills an important function, taking away the b5 square. Incidentally, there is there is an alternative here. Instead of, we can get melodramatic here. Instead of making a queen, we can actually make a rook check. And rook d8 comes to the same thing. There we go. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and more stuff coming up on the channel soon. Some uh, King's Gambit games. I'm looking forward to presenting those. And uh, we've got Magnus Carlsen also will be playing in his new uh, Rapid and Blitz Grand Prix um tournaments there's going to be one starting on tuesday the lindors abbey tournament so watch out for that as well thanks for watching